our patients are dying, not because our diseases are incurable, but because as consumers, they do not provide a viable market for pharmaceutical products. Medical science has made extraordinary advances to develop new medicines, new vaccines, and better tools to diagnose disease. But this progress has not been shared equally. NSF staff around the world continue to see people suffering and dying because they cannot access the life-saving medicines they desperately need. We have struggled against this injustice and worked hard to find solutions. We launched a campaign with MSF to do two things. One, we wanted to increase access to existing medicines, and two, we wanted to influence which medicines were developed and to ensure that people's needs were put first. These have been our two goals over the last 20 years. The number of times I was told I was going to die was like three times. And the numbers of pills swallowed were like 20,000 to 30,000 tablets. Tuberculosis is the deadliest infectious disease in the world. Pumeza was diagnosed in 2010 with its most severe form called XDR-TB. Her treatment included a daily injection with toxic side effects that made her go deaf. When I first met Pomeza, it was in a really tiny clinic in Kailicha. I remember feeling really shocked by the fact that she was deaf. And I just kept saying to her, I was like, so you can't hear anything, like nothing. And you were okay before. At the time, there were lots of people dying of XDR-TB. I mean, as soon as you got a diagnosis of XDR-TB, your chance of survival was less than 10%. So I felt quite hopeless. At the time, no new TB drugs had been developed for around 50 years. Pharmaceutical corporations saw little profit in developing medicines for diseases that hit poor people the hardest. If you get it, you get all drugs that make you deaf, blind, or disabled for life. I didn't understand what was that all about. Why are the scientists not making the drugs? It didn't make sense to me. We got to a point with Pumeza where we thought, the current treatment isn't working. We need something else. There was a drug called linezolid, which potentially would help Pumeza, and so we tried our hardest to get hold of it. Pfizer, the drug corporation that made linezolid, had a monopoly on the drug in South Africa. This prevented the country from importing more affordable versions. Monopolies on medicines were already barriers in other places where Médecins Sans Frontières, or MSF, worked. Drug-resistant tuberculosis reminds me of what I saw when I started as a lawyer and I watched people die of AIDS. We have to find the drugs to treat drug-resistant tuberculosis. People are dying as we speak. I've been working for Doctors Without Borders for 13 years. I joined MSF Access Campaign right at the time when the patent law was being changed. After India joined the World Trade Organization, it had to change its laws and start granting monopolies through patents on medicines for the first time. This would allow pharmaceutical corporations to charge high prices and shut out the production of more affordable generic medicines. One of the most uh, important things that they wanted to, to change about the patent system was to bring in 20-year monopolies with no safeguards. So you could have 20-year monopolies on medicines and then you could patent the same medicine again and again and prolong the monopoly. This threatened the flow of affordable, life-saving generic medicines from India, medicines that MSF patients and millions of other people in low- and middle-income countries depended upon. It was a prescription for disaster and we knew we had to do something at that point. Swift mobilization followed. MSF joined a broad coalition of allies, patient groups, and other civil society groups in India. We asked that the patent law have the right to challenge patents, so we as people could challenge patents that were wrongly being claimed. After months of campaigning, the activists won a landmark victory. 
The right for people to challenge an unfair patent was incorporated into the new law in India. It provided an essential tool in the struggle for access to medicines. In South Africa, however, Pfizer used its monopoly to keep the price of linezolid cripplingly high. In order to obtain linezolid, you had to buy it privately through Pfizer. It was about 760 rand per tablet at that time. That involved quite a cost for MSF. MSF approached Pfizer in South Africa a number of times, uh, but they wouldn't engage with us. We started working with the Access Campaign and with Section 27 um, to see how we could bring the drug in for MSF patients, how we could bring it into the country from overseas. This is not fair. It's a TB drug. It works, fix the patent law so that the drugs can be available to everyone who needs it. TB is an emergency. TB. It took years of legal battles and street protests to get hold of the drug. Finally, the case was settled out of court. MSF was allowed to bring in generic linezolid from India for people with tuberculosis we were treating in Kailicha. Why do we have this problem constantly, whether it is for HIV or Hep C and now for DRTB? The system has not changed. It continues to favor pharmaceutical corporations over the lives of people. In 2006, the pharmaceutical corporation Novartis sued the Indian government, trying to roll back the safeguards activists had won. Novartis sought to return to a model of profiteering based on ever-prolonged monopolies. You don't have to be dependent on a monopoly system. You can have a high volume, low cost model of delivering generic medicines. And I think that model itself because it hurts pharmaceutical corporation profiteering, they want to break it down. We were like, how do we explain this to people, what Noates is trying to do? How do you explain to people what this means for their life? And we did everything we could. We shamed the company, we went to its shareholder uh, meetings, we marched against them, we delivered petitions, and we were so determined. That the only thing that we had were our voices. The Novartis case lasted almost seven years. People all over the world mobilized. I remember uh, having just delivered my baby, and it was just a few days, you know, and I remember getting a call from a reporter. She said, you all have won the case, you know. Novartis has lost in the Chennai High Court. And I was just like, we are so relieved, you know, that the courts have stood by people. I think it was a very happy moment, you know, as happy as me having the child, you know, I was really very happy. That victory allowed the MSF Access Campaign and our allies to continue to challenge unfair patents and ensure the flow of affordable generic medicines from India to MSF patients and to other people around the world. <laughs> In South Africa, Pumeza's resolve to overcome the challenges she faced with her illness grew stronger. So one Sunday, I took her out for the day and brought her to Lion's Head and we got about a third of the way up. But she was really struggling and suddenly I was like, well, maybe this isn't the best idea. I said, Pumeza, you know, I think we should turn around. And I remember her turning to me and she was like, I tell you what, if there is one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get to the top of this mountain. This is like XDRTB. I'm gonna conquer this if it's the last thing. And by the time she got to the top, she was just super excited. In 2013, three years after her diagnosis, Pumeza was cured thanks to treatment with linezolid. 
This was the moment that I decided I want to get involved, to get everyone a fair chance at life, to get everyone access to medication that is life-saving. I took it upon me to help other people who didn't have the stage I was given. Two years later, a crowdfunding campaign paid for Pumeza's cochlear implant surgery to reverse the deafness the previous toxic treatments had caused. Pumeza, I want you to have a chance to hear what your mom says. With this implant, she was able to hear her mother's voice for the first time in four years. <laughs> Pumeza's activism continues today in her local community in Kailicha and at national and international levels. My name is Pumeza Chisil. I was diagnosed with normal TB in 2010. While all along I had XDR TB. I ask you to act now. I ask you for change. <laughs> I think the example that Pumeza showed us was how powerful a patient advocate can be. She can really speak from her heart about her experiences. I think that's essential going forward with the new drugs. So yes, there are new drugs being developed called the Beraqualin. Haven't seen that drug yet, but uh, I saw it's working. I saw someone who got cured. I went to a cure party, which I think is great. But then there was always a red tape drug being out of reach. In 2019, Pumeza joined forces with the MSF Access Campaign to challenge Johnson & Johnson's patent in India on the TB drug Bedaquilin. Hello to you again, Pumeza. Have you got any questions from the press? So I've been interviewed both by Indian press and South African press. A more affordable version could mean many more people could be cured of TB without the severe side effects that Pumeza suffered. People need to think this as not as a rich and poor class divide. They need to think of this as something that's fundamental to all of us. And when you are chronically ill, like I am with asthma, your medicines are your lifeline. I know how expensive treatments are because I buy my own medicines. I, I cannot imagine not being able to buy my inhaler. It's an essential human right if there is a treatment out there that could potentially improve your life or save your life, then you should have access to it. That's a right that we all have. You can only change a system by getting people involved in it the way we did for Noatis. So that's what MSF is, Access Campaign is trying to do. What we need to do is realign the system to people's lives. And I think that's an unfinished business for us. My life changed now I can talk on behalf of other people who don't have a voice. I speak for them, and I think I'm very proud of that. Everyone should have access to medication, and those who are fighting, whatever they're doing is very important. I think that everyone must be involved. Scientists, politicians, patients, etc. like everyone must be involved. Still a fight, but we are going to win it. Don't give up. Keep no